We're chilling. Um, hey, what's up? Hello. Not thanks much. For, thanks for joining. This is cool. Is um, this going to get me in any trouble? Am I going to start like a fa another factional warfare by by talking? To I, I watched that six and a half hour video you sent me about all the cozy drama. So that's amazing. You watch that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's possible. I mean, yeah, you know, I can't make any guarantees. These people are a little bit erratic. They make they're odd kind of choices. insane. They're yeah. insane. Like I've never. Yeah, yeah, it's. Yeah. It, it, I, I truly never expected that. Like bantering with Nick a little bit on Twitter would launch me into this weird subculture that I had no idea existed, and I generally think is insane. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I had a similar experience. If you saw, and you saw the tail end of it there, but um, I did. You know, these guys. What can you What can you say about them? You know, what What, what can you say? <laughs> uh, they're, you know, they're just little guys. They're just little, um, you know, the incels. And that's not a that's not a derogatory statement toward them. That's what they call themselves. They're just like they're proud incels. They've embraced it. So imagine being a guy who's like, you know, coming into manhood, young 20s, and you feel like you've discovered the big problem in the world to them. They, f they found the big problem. And also, they're not only powerless to really affect that, or they feel that way, and so they're, they're grasping for power to change that problem, but they're even on a personal level, they're powerless in their own lives to get there's a big problem in their life that they're powerless to solve too, which is the woman problem. So they get the woman problem and what they would call the Jewish problem. So on the big picture, there's a problem with, and they also, they, there's a link in their minds to the two, which is that the Jewish problem causes the woman problem because the Jews have subverted the minds of our women and pornified them and all this. So, so they're oh, spiraling. Yeah. They were telling me about they're like they're like Jews are responsible for all porn. And I was like, I don't know that that's real. And I don't actually honestly really care. But like that, it, it just seems like you can't get a girlfriend because the Jews make porn. That doesn't make any sense. Carlin, um, say five more seconds about that while I turn another light on. I'm going to be right back. I'm sorry. Um, uh, I, I, I don't really have anything else to say. I feel like anything else I say is going to get me in trouble, but I'll keep talking until you come back. <laughs> OK, good enough. Good enough. You made it through. OK. You can see me a little better now, maybe. All right. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, well, you know, it might be true. I don't know. Uh, I've heard somebody make a case. Like, actually, I heard that the very first time that a nude female breast was shown in a Hollywood feature film was actually a film about the Holocaust. Well, can you believe that? And it was a really? film made by, made by a Jew. I mean, and the Jews run Hollywood. You know, everybody knows that. It's all Jewish people. So we could talk about that, or we could just skip it completely and talk about whatever you want to. And I know you're into um, you're into exposing like the vocabulary and the syntax around yeah. the covert socialist wokeism. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I spend most of my time doing. We can talk about whatever you want to talk about. I know that uh, Beardson got very annoyed when I took over his whole stream to talk about socialist stuff, and so you know we don't have to talk. <laughs> we don't have to talk. You're a lot smarter than him, though. Is the thing. It's, it's like true. like. You know, I knew that he wasn't going to be able to understand basically anything of what I was saying. So I'm like, I was like going into it. I was like, I'm just going to say what I want to say. And, and like, whatever comes of it, comes of it. Um, but you're smarter than him. So you're well, like, direct the conversation. Where should we go? Okay, well, a little about that. So I think, um, yeah, a lot of it is, was going over his head or whatever. Um, or just oh, yeah. right past him because he wasn't open. But also, I think the big frustration of the fallout that he experienced is like, he just, he caught a bunch of flack from the rest of the people in the group. Because part of their brand is like pushing back against people like you and women specifically, but also especially somebody who's really, uh, God forbid a woman sound like she's lecturing you. Uh, you might as well have just like cut your own balls off right in front of everybody. That's mm -hmm. how their gang is. So he was feeling oh, yeah. very emasculated and embarrassed. And then he tried to cope and say like, no, I was, I was, I did that on purpose to set it up. So that she'd come on the Weekly Sweat, which is this other show he does with the guy that you originally had the problem yeah. with. Anyway, maybe you already get that, but I just think it's kind of funny the way that it went down. We, we've all been oh, enjoying I a good laugh. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, like, like he's, like, made this whole thing, like, she wouldn't have gone on this other show if she had, like, like the, the whole thing was bullshit. Like, I was, like, bored. I was screwing around. People were badgering me to talk to him. I was like, well, we might as well get this over with because I knew exactly what was going to happen. 
like I told them not to talk about the race stuff with me and then they wanted to talk about the race stuff. I was like, okay, well, I told you not to do this, but if you want to play this game where we can play this game. And, um, and so I knew how it was going to go for him. I, I was surprised it, it didn't go as badly for me as I thought it was going to. I actually ended up getting people interested in what I was saying, which was really my own goal. But like, I was never going to go on the weekly sweat. I hope people understand that. Like, like I'm not stupid. I heard what Beardson said as soon as that stream was over. I was like, this yeah. is never going to happen. I'm just going to placate him and like, whatever. Like, if you don't have to fight, you don't fight. And then I went on um, politically provoked because I thought it would be funny because I was high and I was like, you know, I've got nothing better to do. It's 11 o'clock at night. Like, why, why not? Um, and I knew they were probably going to ambush me and I knew that that was going to set off a thing. And, and it, it happened. I was actually shocked that it happened exactly like I thought it would. Like, I'm pretty good at predicting things, but I, I even impressed myself with how close I got that one. All right. Know. So let's let's jump right into then. Um, let's like leave that right where it is and hear your <laughs> thoughts about. So the way you came into this conversation is with regard to Nick. So let's hear your yeah. thoughts, if you don't mind. What's your, what's your thoughts before and after? What's your present thoughts right now about Nick and his movement? Um, you had some things to say about his Israel-Palestine comments, and you were in agreement. But now you've yeah. had, interacted with this community. So maybe, like, give us a broad, big-picture view of Nick and what he's doing. What's your impression? I mean, it's hard for me to say because, like, people seem to think, like, I have this, like, thing where, like, I'm talking to Nick and any, like, I haven't actually spoken to Nick is the thing. Like, we've bantered on Twitter and that's about it. So it's actually, like, hard for me to say of what exactly I think about him because I don't really, I don't really know him beyond what anyone else sees on the internet, right? So I think right now where I'm at is, um, I think that Nick is very, very smart. He's stupid in some ways, though, because he's young. So you can be both you can be both very intelligent and also stupid still because you don't have life experience because yeah. intelligence doesn't always you know what I'm saying because you're old. Yeah, the right? immature stupid. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. It's not like he's not a dumb person. No. Um, no, I he's think real sharp. that he's real sharp. He's really sharp and 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 sharp to like a scary degree, if I'm honest about it, um, which is why I was paying attention to him in the first place. I think that Nick does what Tim Pool does in that he surrounds himself with stupid people because it makes him look smarter and they're also much easier to control and get to do what he wants them to do. Like, you know, it's very clear to me that like Nick will use people if it's like a means to an end. If he thinks he can get them to do something for him, he's going to like be friends with them and he's going to help them and do like whatever. So it was kind of confusing to me. Like when all this started, I was like, what exactly does Nick want from me? Like, why is he being nice to me? Like, it, and it was really, it was suspicious to me from the beginning. And I still don't know the answer to this. And maybe he does just like me. I don't know. But he started following me from his like sock accounts back when he had the Apple account. And that was like, I was like, why the fuck is Nick Fuentes following me? What's going on? And mm. then that account got banned. And then the Purple Grimace account came back. And that account followed me almost immediately. And I DM'd him. And I was like, why are you following me? And his answer was, well, you're following me. I was like, okay, touche, <laughs> Nick. Like, whatever, whatever, I guess. And then that account got banned. And then this this new account that he has, the Autumn Graper account came on. And it followed, like, I was one of the first people he followed from that account. And then I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, and I was, I was really, I was like, Nick is planning something evil and I don't know what it is. Like, I'm about to get hit in the face with something and I have no idea what's coming. Um, but I just kind of left it. And then, then the banter started and then that, 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 you know, whatever happened, happened. But like, it's, I don't know what he wants from me. I don't know why he's been doing this. And that kind of scares me because like, I see him, how he talks about other people in terms of like, using them for something and then discarding them. And so that's not something I'm like really interested in, to be honest. Um, I don't know. I don't know where else to go from here. What questions do you have? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I might have some thoughts. Like if I were to just take some guesses at, at uh, possibilities for why, why it's like that. The first thing that jumps to my mind, like the real obvious answer, and I don't know if this is it, but it could be like somebody mentioned, um, you know, Nick reads a lot of articles. He has a few different uh, authors and bloggers and like up to date, you know, thought leaders who, Mm -hmm. are journaling every day and he'll read everything that they write. And that's kind of like how his show comes together and how he stays tapped in. So mm -hmm. I wonder if it's possible that your name came up, came up in conversation in context of some idea. Uh, perhaps it's the type of people who are going like, there's some sort of maybe a pipeline being formed from leftist to libertarian where Nick started out as a libertarian type. 
he he had a libertarian mindset originally and then um he went through a arc of transformation in his own thinking way back so he might be able to see that oh if somebody who's there i might be able to lead them to where i am in the same path that i've gone on so if you came from leftist to libertarian he can meet you there and bring you to where he is i don't i don't know but but it does kind of make sense that he would want to make a link there especially because you would be the person who could take people who were left or or are transforming so if he could you might be a really interesting link in some sort of creative pipeline because there are a lot of leftists who are waking up to the nonsense of like the insanity of the woke ideology there's a lot of those I yeah think. yeah 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 um they're seeing like holy shit i never really thought about america could be like for example uh a the idea of a like a tyrannical um, Orwellian takeover of the government, that doesn't sound possible in America. And then COVID happens and they go, oh, shit. Actually, they can do stuff that's really radical really fast. And, it, and these people who just did the BLM riots and these people who are, you know, trying to cut our kids' dicks off or whatever they're telling me, man, they're, they're able to pull some, like, massive strings. They shut the whole world down. Um, oh, yeah. So that's actually really scary. And then that, that fear makes them go, wait a minute, what? Like they were just copacetic and chilling. Like, no, we're just progressive. We're moving forward. And but now they're going like, wait a minute. They, all they, Animal Farm warned us about centralized power in the hands of pe greedy people. Uh, it goes really bad. I remember reading that book as a kid. I didn't think it could go that way. Maybe it actually can. There's people that are. Oh, it is going out. that way. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, it is, it is going. But I do think, like, like if I if I had a wish of like how to harness like the energy of Nick's audience, um, because I do think like so. What I'll say for him is I do think it's very impressive that he's he's he has this audience that loves him so much and that is yeah. passionate and it is engaged. I mean, that's an impressive thing to build. You have to give him credit for that. Um, yeah. they yeah. actually could do a fair bit of damage in terms of like throwing sand in the gears and causing problems for the real activists if they wanted to if they wanted to actually like focus on it they could like they, they, they could fuck up their lives they could make life really difficult for them they could screw up their events they could just mm. make it harder for them to do what they're doing and i think that that would actually be something subversive like that would be a really good use of time and energy okay, and i think they'd now have we're talking they would, they would they would have a lot of fun with it too to okay. be honest like like, like Look, let's fuck up the day of these people that we hate like when why I not first found nick it, he was doing what was called the groiper ward you know about that I, I heard about it a little bit like yeah was, where he was trying to fuck up turning point usa charlie kirk and ben shapiro he yeah. was just showing up to their events and fucking them up and they were conservatives yeah. who wear yarmulkes and travel to israel and kiss the wall and stuff like that and and they have uh, homosexuals on the stage and stuff and he's like you guys are the new conservatives give me a break so nick was like taking back conservatism and making it more traditional and catholic is mm -hmm. what he was like but really, but they were showing up and it was fun. He was activating the youth who's all over the country and telling them that they could go to these rallies and they were showing up and asking questions and, and screwing up the Q&A sections. And that was really fun. And I thought this, that was literally what attracted me to Nick. But, and then I found out that he was, then I started watching his show and I found out, oh, he's really, really sharp and he knows a lot of stuff. This rules. So, but that level of activism was fun to me. And so mm -hmm. what you're saying is like, okay, so maybe Groiper War 2 could be, instead of going to Charlie Kirk and Ben Shapiro, go to these places too. Hey, Groipers, there's a bunch of, learn the leftist doublespeak, learn the, the crypto mm -hmm. Marxism that they're doing. And they're doing rallies. They're doing book events. Why aren't the Groipers going there? Go to the enemy. I think it would be great. And and if they're and if they're really connected with the Jews, like you guys say they are, then they are your enemy anyway. So why aren't you doing it? Like I think that would be fabulous. Yeah, let's do it. Groypers called out. <laughs> Groypers, Groyper, your pussies if you don't Groypers, your pussies. If you don't go if you can't go face Sharon Salzberg or whatever her name is, who just wrote a book and is at these uh, woke rallies. You just you could go step to Charlie Kirk. You could step to Ben Shapiro. Put on your big boy pants. Go step up to Sharon and care whoever they whoever it is. It's Shaniqua. Or I, don't I don't know. I'm just making up a name. What are the names of these? What are the names you just gave me? Angela Davis and Sophie yes. Lewis. Why, go why disrupt all their shit. Go, go disrupt, disrupt their thing. Go yeah. go fuck them up.
epic. Go epic fuck cool. up every event that Haymarket Books does. Haymarket Books actually they're based out of Chicago, and so and so if Nick wanted to really cause some trouble, Haymarket Haymarket Books has something called Haymarket House in Chicago where they hold socialist events in the middle of Chicago, and so go fuck up their shit. They record everything. They stream it on the internet, just like Turning Point USA. Why not? See, look, and if it, now now let's get personal. If Beards and Bearden and Whirls hmm. and Root and all of Nick's shitty friends. Oh, by the way, you think I'm older than 50? Fuck that guy in the chat that said I was 50 years old. Fuck you. Nah, Fuck what you are you, right what are you 23, ass, 24? Fuck you. 29, obviously. <laughs> Whoa, 29. I would have thought you were 25 at the most. Oh, thank you. Um, anyway, uh, one second, super interrupt. chat. Carlin, <laughs> Hold on. Your takes are so basic, dated, or not tapped in. Hold on. For you to From pretend you studied this deeply yet you haven't figured out who is behind the would we take you seriously? You don't know shit. A little bit of a hater there. Um, Carlin, your takes are basic and dated and not tapped in. If you, you pretend to have studied this deeply, <laughs> but if you haven't figured out who's behind the curtain, why would we take you seriously? You don't know shit. I mean, I think that that's laughable to anyone that's actually followed my content. And so, you know, I don't take that seriously. I, I highly suspect that person can't even articulate what my takes are. So, you know, whatever. Come on. Teach it's their own, your life and He knows what's up. Uh, well, uh, you know. Well, look, uh, what I was going to say is um, criticism number three of Nick. All right. Number one, the Christian LARP stuff. It sucks. Do you number think he's actually a Catholic? Do you think he like he actually believes that? Um, no. Yeah, I kind of think. I don't same. believe any of them believe it. I don't actually yeah. believe any of them believe it. I, but I'll say it this way: I, I think that they believe it as much as you believe that Porkfest is actually a representation of a level anarchic civilization experience. No. I don't Fair think enough. you really, I think like you admitted at the end, like, okay, well, it, technically it is a LARP, maybe not as much as Renaissance Fest, but it's, it's a cool week long event. Yeah, it's a, a week long event. Like yeah, how, but, how, you know, <laughs> Yeah, but, but you're saying, yeah, but yeah, you're saying like, yeah, it is a, you know, we're, we're, we're LARPing as if, but it goes good. So come and experience what it's like and we can, you know. Yeah. And I think in the same way they are just embracing the LARP, I, but. But so in, in a way, there's, I think they are sort of like lying to themselves. I think they would tell themselves that they really believe it. But really, Easy like, money. they believe in believing uh, more than they actually do believe. They're like, profess that I believe. Believing in it is sort of like an act of believing. Like, they are, they're performatively believing. They're embracing it because they don't know what else to do. And they've talked themselves into it or something. But I don't, I don't know. I don't think that they all are... Uh, I don't think there's a truly held conviction as much as they profess. You know what I mean? Fair enough. So anyway, but so it's the it, but so number one, the Christian thing is lame. Number two, the hope drift Easy sucks. Money. Okay, another super Clutch chat. Sent one four dollars and four cents. That's I fine. left the libertarian movement in 2014. It seemed to have been taken over by trannies, drug dealers, and kid doddlers. Is this still an issue in these <laughs> circles? Did you hear that? Yeah. Um, so, so, uh, so listen, listen, like the libertarian movement is fucked up. Can we all just acknowledge that? Like, I, like, I, I, I cannot even deal with like the level of dysfunction and infighting and bullshit in the libertarian community. Mm. Honestly, like I was involved in it. Um, I was involved in the libertarian party of New Hampshire. I was involved kind of like in the takeover, the Mises caucus takeover, the libertarian party. Um, I thought it was going to get better. I really did. It actually ended up getting worse. And so, um, so I will acknowledge fully that there is a lot of bullshit in the libertarian community which is why i don't really like do stuff with them right now mm. you know i believe well, in it don't get me wrong i believe in it i have a lot of friends like most of my friends are libertarians but like there there's just so many weird libertarians that it's like go away i feel that yeah that's how it goes it's hard to, it's hard to have a well i mean i don't know i don't want to dig into that too much but yeah that's, so that's the answer mm -hmm. to that question that's her experience mm -hmm. um so, uh, so what I was going to say, so the Christian thing, the hope grift thing, number three, and maybe the biggest problem with Nick, his friends suck. Like all the Yo, people that he's attracted around I him agree. are just low quality. 
I agree. I was I was genuinely shocked at how bad these people were. I really was because I had no idea. I I'm not involved in this little subculture beyond like I had watched you know some of Nick's shows or like whatever. I had no idea who these people were until like a week ago, and just. I don't get it. I don't get what, like, why, like, these people are only going to drag him down. Like, I, I can't imagine that. I am, like, I can't imagine that he doesn't, like, feel like he's wearing a giant anchor around his neck with the yeah. people that are on Cozy causing all of these problems. And, like, you know, he wants to grow. It, it's pretty, like, my perception of Nick is that he's trying to actually make something real. And, and, and we can, you know, bicker about, like, whether or not, like, he, like, really, but I think he is actually trying to do something. He's showing up in the world a lot more than most people do, and so I have respect for that, but I can't imagine that he doesn't know that these people are never going to get him anywhere. No, he I knows. don't get it. I'm sure he knows. He, I mean, like, there's no way he doesn't know. Uh, but he's just tolerating it, and, you know, he's, you know, beggars can't be choosers or whatever, and he started off with nothing as a young man in 19. Mm -hmm came on the scene and the people who started supporting him he just supported them back he just like in a reciprocal you know you got my back i got yours and if you saw that whole documentary that whole you know that there was a yeah. seven hour thing there was that moment nick and i got into it remember and he said it was sort of like a partners in crime situation like what his concept of loyalty is um if i show up to your house with a body in my trunk and i'm covered in blood i expect you to jump in the car and go bury the body with me mm -hmm. and i'll do the same for you so he's just looking at for friends that are like that and but what that's landing him with is like only idiots that would yeah. be that way. Um, he's he's got like a crime boss uh, mafioso Italian concept or something like that, but that's not. Uh, but he's not actually a crime boss. They're not actually burying bodies. What he's really doing, he's like, I'll give you clout if you give me clout, and or something like that. It comes down to it. And it anyway, yeah. so it, it's and he and he has like a too many burnt bridges and all that, but. But the reason I said it was because, look, we just came to what, sh what should have taken place when you got onto Cozy, when Nick like made a connection with you and you had some reciprocal support going on and you were having his back with, um, what was his name, Cra Clavin? And, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and that was cool and that was going on. And then what Wurzelroot, if he had half a brain cell, what he would have done rather than coming and antagonizing you and grandstanding and making content out of entertaining his audience by picking on you or whatever. What he would have done is came looking to get to the place where we are. It's like, Oh, Nick found this person. He expressed interest. He saw some value there and he would go look to try to find it. And then, and then take that value and translate it to the rest of Nick's audience. Like, Hey guys, we could be going after Angela Davis. We could be going after Hey house books or whatever that was called. And mm -hmm. he would be learning from you you know, another angle for them to like be broadening their attack. Yeah. That was my hope of what would happen with yeah. it. Honestly, I was like, maybe there's like an Where opportunity here. Listening? Like we, 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 we might not agree on a lot. In fact, there's a lot that we don't agree on and never will agree on. But like, if we can like focus our attention around like a common enemy where we do agree on, like I have no problem like, you know, I, I don't care about being hated on the Internet. I don't care if people like like are pissed off that I stand up for Nick Fuentes. So I'm I'm happy to do that. But like what was surprising to me and I did I did say this to him directly in private. I said, like, I don't actually have a problem standing up for you. But like what was shocking to me is not only do I have to take shit from my friends when I stand up for you, but I have to get shit thrown at me by the streamers on your platform when I stand up for you. So I just don't know like what the incentive is. And so, um, so like, I would love to have some sort of thing like that. Like, I don't care anything about Beardson and Wars or Road. I think those two are morons. And so, um, you know, if there, if there are ways to make a productive relationship, I'm more than open to it. I think that, you know, we're all on the back foot. Like we're all, we're all like, we're all excommunicated from the establishment. We're all, we're all dissidents in our own ways. I'm a dissident in a different way than you guys are dissidents, but I think we all, we, we do have that in common and I get, and I have an appreciation for dissident subcultures. So like we could band together and cause some fucking trouble for evil people that are trying to do evil things in the world and actually try to do something productive, or we can keep firing at each other. Which mm -hmm. do you want? Right. Yeah. So I see you as like, um, you know, the Gripers are over here. They've, they've coalesced as some sort of army because of the Griper war. And now they've, now they're just sitting around sort of twiddling their thumbs, uh, jerking each other off because they got nothing to do. The war's over they're just watching Nick's right. show. And then they thought, thought something was going to happen with Kanye. 
Um, and then that fizzled out, and they went, uh, they kind of left it in Nick's hands. Like, all right, now we're here to just sort of like support Nick as our champion. He just goes and fights. He just jousts with the big dogs. He's going to go against Tim Poole and Alex Jones, and none of that really did anything. But they're not activated on anything. And But right. I think that if Nick was going to, like if Nick are, if you are going to create a cult, that's what was great about Nick when I discovered him. The Groiper War thing, all of these young guys, even though they were, you know, wearing Catholic rosaries and stuff, I was able to like, who cares? This rules. They're showing up at Car Charlie Kirk's event, showing up with uh, Ben Shapiro. Activate all the youth. But Nick seems to have, it seems to me that his strategy has shifted. He's like, no, what I'm going to be doing is doing this show that's intended to red pill a bunch of young guys. And then five or ten years when they're all grown up and they have jobs and a bunch of money, then they're going to be supporting me at a later stage in my life. And then he's going to execute Order 66 or something and he's going to like take over the government or that seems like a, that's like a real fucking just chucking the ball down the field, Hail Mary type of pass. Hail Mary, no, well, I, uh, no pun intended. I, I guess I don't know why he can't do both. I guess I don't know why, like, they can't continue to solidify and recruit people undergoing after, like, the, who the real enemy is. And, and I actually have gr great respect for, like, causing trouble for the GOP. Like, I fucking hate the GOP. I hate the conservative establishment. Like, they're even worse than the left for me. Mm -hmm. And so, like, cause trouble there. Cause trouble with, like, the real Marxists where I can give you their addresses and their event lists. Like, go fucking cause trouble. Um, and you'll have fun doing it. Like, I can't imagine that that gripers wouldn't like disrupting like awful leftist events as much as they love disrupting awful conservative events like it's all fun right and so like why can't you do that now and continue to solidify your army of people and and give them an activity that can bond them together and then you know maybe 10 years from now you really do do this presidential thing i don't know like i just don't understand why both can't happen talk about a, a an a here's the the big payoff for me would be it's not necessarily that shutting down some far leftist event. Like maybe it does. Maybe that takes a spoke out of their wheel. Maybe it really messes them up. Make them makes makes them think twice. They have to like tighten their security, and it really like fucks up their program. Yeah. It, it makes them go like, oh, we can't do this so freely anymore. You, we can't just do it and get away with it. But also, number two, what if it gets some publicity and there's some viral moments that come out of it? And now there's right. all sorts of other young people in that town and on towns across the, and it gets on TikTok and who knows what. What the heck is a groiper? They're over here. Fuck. They they found the real bad guys, and they're out here doing these moments that are like really epic, and they're owning these, um, you know, whatever, and it, and it's going great, and then swells the ranks. Now there's more. That's like what an incredible opportunity to two birds with one stone. You can maybe have an effect on what the far leftists are doing, which is good, but then also you can create an opportunity for like outreach outreach to more people joining like oh this seems fun i want to do that too that that was literally me during the griper war one that's where i came from yeah. oh this seems fun yeah like there i do mean listen man, like i've i've disrupted leftist events before like i've done it's fun it's like it really is a community building activity they get so pissed off and when they get pissed off they make mistakes and then you can make fun of them and you can clown them and you can do cringe videos and like whatever you want. And, and like I said, like, you know, whether it's leftist events, conservative events, I don't really care. Either is good for me. Hey, one um, second. Quentin's I got a super chat from Nick Clinton. Clinton. Four cents cozy oh. is a streaming site for entertaining content. The views and opinions expressed in by our streamers are those of the streamers okay, and do not just, necessarily this reflect is the shit views post. or positions of not America really, first. Oh, okay. That's uh, not really well, Nick, well, but that's like a quote out of the terms of service or something. That's a disclaimer from the site. Cozy is a streaming site for entertaining content. The views and opinions expressed in this, <laughs> in expressed in by our streamers uh, or those of the streamers do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of America first. Okay. Thank you. Nick well, Fuentes. Fine, fine, um, fine. But, like, but, but the but other it thing should, too... it should, Hey, you <laughs> dumb idiots over there. It should get it together. Anyway. Let's see. I had something else to say and I forgot. I can't remember where, where was I going with this? I had well, something important to say. I don't know. Damn. All right. Well, we were talking about uh, the possible Groiper War Two against the leftists over there. Yeah. Oh no. This is this is the other thing. Is like in terms of like expanding the ranks and like bringing new people in. This is actually another thing that was surprising to me because it's like, listen, like 
when 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 Nick started like Nick and I started bantering on Twitter, like Grapers started coming into my chat on my channel and and they were actually getting along with my audience, believe it or not. Like my audience was like actually curious about the Grapers and they were asking them questions and like my audience is weird. It's like a weird mishmash of people all the way from like college age students like up to senior citizens. I have men, I have women, I have like like every every like, you know, all di all different types of political opinions and they mm -hmm. were actually getting along with them and I was like really surprised by it cuz I thought my audience was going to be pissed off by it and they weren't. And um but then what happened is like when all this stuff with like basically people started like, it, what it felt like to me is that grapers were like coordinating in like a discord somewhere and then like all of a sudden several of them would like slide into my dms at the same time saying something like why don't you just back away slowly and don't say it? i was like what the fuck is it? are you even talking am i like in the mob like why are you <laughs> like why like why don't you guys want to appeal to new people and it was almost like it was like they're trying to like drive new people away and i was like is this really what nick wants does nick not want to grow his ranks or is it just that his audience is trying to like gatekeep and keep him all to theirs it's uh, it's yeah it really it is. nick is like nick is their girlfriend it's true yeah nick is their girlfriend mm -hmm. like if you understand that dynamic of all these incels it's nick true though i hadn't is, thought of it like that it's so he, true yeah he is their sassy cutie pie girlfriend that's why and he they doesn't really that's him. why he doesn't have a girlfriend and he's single and he's in a relationship with them and he flirts with them every single night. He does his show. He puts on a performance. Uh, and then the super chat section is the time when he flirts with them and he kind of like puts out and they give him some money and he says, thank you. And he jokes with them. And he does his little, uh, and it's like, that's the relationship. So <laughs> you kind of, you kind of are moving in. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. I, I they thought I tried to steal their man. I kept telling yep. him like I haven't even talked to him. Like everyone needs to relax. Like Jesus Christ. Maybe it's the other way. Maybe he's the boy and they're his girlfriend or something. I don't know. I don't, I don't mean no, to just call him a girl. But I, I think he's their there's, girlfriend. The, there's a yeah. There's a uh, there's a, a insecure, very possessive relationship between the Groypers and Nick, and it's sort of sexual. <laughs> it's sort of like sexually charged. Yeah. You know, I mean, when you repress your sexuality, it has to go somewhere, right? And this is apparently yeah. how it's manifested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't, yeah, it's not a big audience of, uh, you know, dads. It's not an mm -hmm. audience of men who are just, you know, like, you know, Nick is the greatest hope for protecting their family and stuff. It's a bunch of really, really repressed and, uh, you but know, dissatisfied sad. guys. But yeah. that's sad because, like, you know, for me, like, I, I, Incel sent four dollars and four cents. Stop the slander. Nick is our great leader, not our girlfriend. We date Asians. <laughs> L Big Tech. L Sloppy Joe. Winsels rise. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, but it's yeah. sad though, because like, like you know how I see it is like you know Nick is actually trying to build something, and his own audience is preventing him from expanding beyond what he's doing right now and that's you know that's kind of a shitty thing to do it's like you know it's like when you're dating someone right and like you know maybe they're they're going out for like the next big job but you're afraid if they get this big job they're gonna they're gonna break up with you and like you know move on to like a younger model or something like that so you try yeah. to hold them back what they yeah. want it's possessive and it's weird and it's like that's not how human relationships are supposed to be yeah well uh you know Maybe, you know, sometimes, sometimes you go through a toxic relationship and you learn some things and then you come out of it and then you're just a better candidate for something better on the other side, maybe, or maybe you take some time on yeah. your own. That's how it goes sometimes in life if you start off on the wrong foot. So I wonder if we're, maybe we're at the end of an arc. It, it's possible. Is Cozy even back up yet? Let me check right now. It is back up. I checked it, it earlier. Up. Okay. Yeah. It was down yeah. yesterday. That was kind of weird. So um, what do you think Nick should do to like extricate himself from this? Or is that even possible? I've been saying for a while that Nick should just do his show and mm -hmm. just, and he should really increase the quality of the show. He should make the show more dependable. Um, he should be on time. He should set up a studio. He should become, he should capitalize on the level that he's gotten to and make himself into somebody who, if people haven't been on his show with him in studio, they're a bitch. Mm -hmm. He should make himself into the guy who is like, He's the litmus test of if you're real or if you're a phony. And he, and he's like, I've been calling out Tim Pool to come in studio. Tim Pool, if you don't come to my show, 
you're a phony, you're a sellout bitch. Because if you haven't been on, so he should have influencers come to him. He sh- he really could turn the tables. He's at that phase where instead of trying to get a collab on some other influencer's show all the time, he should host other influencers on his show. Like the way Alex Jones does. Alex Jones has Andrew Tate. Alex Jones has, you know, a million other people will come onto his show. And it's and Alex Jones does, like, uh, he has, you know, he won't talk about the Jewish question at all. And he will mm-hmm. shill for Israel every single time. And I don't know if it's because he's, like, been threatened by the Mossad agents or if it's just because he knows that if he does that, he will lose his visa processing and won't be able to shill his boner pills anymore or whatever. But um, he knows the line and he won't cross it, even though he we know that he knows about all of it because he used to talk about it before he was big. Now he won't talk about it anymore. And he totally changed his tune. So there's something fishy going on, and we think he's a little bit uh, used to getting fed well, so he doesn't want to mess with that. But... Nick could now, rather than being an obscure internet person who just sometimes does his show in front of a green screen, he could invest in his show. So I I really think that's what he should do. He should just become a fucking icon in the content creation sphere on his own and just let the work stand for itself. Let his voice be like he is. um, You have to come and sit at the table with Nick or else you suck. Nobody will respect you if you haven't gone to Nick. Nick is the most banned man in America. He's the guy who does this. He talks about every subject. He knows what he's talking about. He's faced everybody. Now you have to come and face him. And he should make you come to him now. And like make mm-hmm. himself the actual like king of this conversation. But he's focused on other things. He's focused on like um he's focusing on the wrong things. He's focused on going out and trying to activate. He goes to Jan Six. He goes on to other people's podcasts. He's branching out with John Zerka and Sneeko and Gr- and Just Pearly thinks and he's begging for crumbs of other people's audiences. They should be coming to him now. He really could do that if he would just God. like it, it, like put in some work on that. And he's been talking about it and then not doing it. So he's looking lazy and weak for not doing that. He has he needs to fucking move to Florida. Build a studio and be there every single day at 5 p.m. Eastern. And he's never late. And he's got a production team that makes good graphics. And they feed him with stuff to talk about. And his show is dependable. And it's on fire. And it's it's palatable. And it looks mainstream. And it's just fucking crushing it on Rumble. And then it's being spread out onto Twitter. And it's, okay, they deplatform me from YouTube. And then start making YouTube look stupid for not having his show anymore. And become like the new Glenn Beck or the new Tucker Carlson or something, but of the internet where he could be the new Rush Limbaugh, but but way better because there's no limits for him. And he'll, he's he been talking about it and he's going to keep doing it, but he's going to do it on a high level. Mm-hmm. I think that's what he should be doing. And then all of his little incel groiper audience, they need to grow up too, but he could still activate them, like maybe with what you were saying. Like he could be sending them, hey, there was one of these that happened last week. I didn't see any of my guys there. What gives? Yeah, but everybody's no, just I mean, sort of I sitting know. idle, and I think he's just kind of being lazy. And I don't think that's a. I think that makes him look weak. I don't disagree with you. The not the not doing his show like on a, at a consistent time drove me fucking crazy. As I was trying to like it, it, like it honestly, it drove me crazy. I was like, bro, can you not like you're doing your show at fucking midnight my time? Can you not buy a fucking watch and show like it, that? That's one of the things yeah. I would definitely agree with you on. Um, but no, I mean, I think that that makes a ton of sense. I also think that you know. I I appreciate loyalty. I appreciate that he has these friends that are loyal to him. I appreciate that he's loyal to them. I think loyalty really does does count for something. But like when your friends are going out and like instantly attacking and shitting on people who like you just because they had like a, a like a conversation with you, you know, I I can't imagine that I'm the only person that they've ever done this to. And it just doesn't make sense. And so it's like at some point you have to say like You know, either like you're going to stop fucking up my shit or like, you know, we're not going to be friends or like whatever. And I'm not saying that with me specifically, because what they did to me really wasn't that big of a deal at the end of the day. But it's just like, like, why are your friends fucking shit up for you? It doesn't make it doesn't make any sense. And why are we loyal to people who are proactively for no good reason? Like, what did Wars were really get from like raiding my stream? Like nothing like what did Beardson really get I mean he kind of like he shot himself in the foot because he he went on an unhinged tear like the following day because <laughs> like it went so wrong for him so yeah. like I don't know I just don't think it's worth it but no it sounds like you're saying that he just needs to get like serious and professional and I tend to agree with that 
it's a it's a it's a tactic really that he seems to be employing that's what we would call the Jewish strategy. Like going back to the Holocaust Holocaust thing. Like there's the strategy is to be the like perpetual underdog. Oh, I'm so persecuted, persecuted, and you know anti-Semitism and the most hated tribe in all of history, and we can't, you know, they hate us for no reason, and it's because we're God's chosen people and all of this stuff. He's, like, doing the same exact thing. I'm persecuted because I'm Christian. I'm persecuted by the ruling elites. I can't have a YouTube channel. I can't have a Patreon. I can't have a PayPal. I can't even, and meanwhile, it's like, yeah, but you can't even do your show on time. It's like, actually, though, you, there's a lot you could do that you're not doing, it's almost seems like you it, it's part of the reason why he gets on people's shows like just pearly things like all of a sudden she blows up she's got a quarter of a million on her channel or something she's got, or whatever the thing is and all she's she's impressed by nick because he's so persecuted that's why she's so impressed by him wow you've had all of this taken away from you wow they canceled you for that you're so canceled wow you're like a bad boy but really it's like that's not, that doesn't make you right. Like what, what, what good are you doing? Uh, you know, he gets into a debate with destiny on fresh and fit, fresh and fit loses their channel not long after, but okay. So you were out, you were able to art out argue like a gamer, like destiny is like a Starcraft video gamer. It's like, cool. That, it, that was great. We'd like to see it, but like destiny streams 10 hours a day, every day, like destiny puts in work all the time. And he's like, autistically uh if you know about him he's like doing research and he's writing his white paper and he's like doing a manifesto and nick is like hey everybody i just woke up oh my hair oh boy i can't fix my hair (laughs) i don't feel good i just ate a big uh you know i door dashed myself a double cheeseburger and uh then i threw up in the bathroom and i don't know i gotta get my nutrition together i don't feel good today anyway big show uh world war three is about to kick off let me give you my take come on dude like what are we doing (laughs) Are, are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> he doesn't seem serious. So I think he's 25 what he'll, years old now. To his credit, he's twenty five years old. Like, <laughs> yeah, okay, but he's a twenty five year old who's been doing this for six years, and he's like, I'm a millionaire, and I'm the only one who's like can get us out of this. Is like the undertone of the message, and I'm the chosen one. I'm chosen by God. I'm the main character. He says all this stuff all the time. So it's it's like um, he seems it seems like he thinks he's in some sort of a lot of the guys I've get to know, they look at the world through a weird anime lens. And I don't know, I'm just coming mm. to understand what anime is all about. But the main character in the anime, all they really have to do is like at the right moment, they just have to summon all of their chi and their willpower and then go fucking super, super Saiyan anti-Semite mode and then they win. They don't. They actually get to be a loser the whole time and take L's the whole time and be a total putz. And actually, the guys who are really organizing really well, they're just the bad guys in the anime. So the anime is like the underdog power fantasy fulfillment. Anyway. Could it be that he's burnt out? Uh, like, and yeah. he just like, he's like <laughs> yeah. phoning it in because he's like burnt out? Yeah, big time. Yeah, it could be that. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's it. And, you know. I think there is a lot of that too. But, I mean, if you're going to be baby Hitler or whatever, if you're going to save us, that's what I mean by the hope thing. If you're going to be the one who saves us and you're burnt out, well, then it's really over. You know, got to show us Maybe that he's he not burnt to, out. That's uh, what he needs to do. He needs to be reborn. He needs to. Maybe he needs moment. to go on a vacation. He needs to go on a vacation and like like relax and unwind and not do anything for a little while and then come back. I mean, like people get burnt out. Like you know, go go relax. Maybe maybe he needs to go like you know go find a girlfriend, go let let off some steam. I don't know. You know, um, if he's the type of person who needs that, then he's not the type of person who's going to win anyway, though, in my opinion. But I don't I re- think it's about needing. I think it's about just, like, relaxing. Well, I recommend, um, like, the people who really do do damage in the world. Like, if you read uh, Elon Musk's uh, biography that just came out, I really recommend it. It's really good. Mm-hmm. The Jew who wrote it did a great job. Great book. <laughs> um, and uh, the thing is, the what Elon does... It's the opposite. It's like he gets stagnant when he's not under like a massive amount of pressure. So what he'll do is like when he starts getting dissatisfied, he'll just fuck everything up by making it 10 times harder. 
and he'll just say, all right, we need to activate. We need to cut the fat from the organization. I want everybody to take, just take away 10 things from the way this process works. And if it doesn't work anymore, then we'll start adding things back. And they're like, you're going to make this so hard. He's like, I don't care. Cut that part out and that part out. And, and also expand this division. And also here, what's a new impossible mountain for us to climb? Okay, we're going there. And like, that's what a leader does. Like a truly powerful man does that shit. He doesn't go, you know what? I'm burnt out. I need a vacation. Elon is like, if I take a vacation, I'll kill myself. You know what I need? I need to make things 10 times harder to activate my fucking well, warrior spirit. That's what Nick needs to do. He needs to find that shit. Yeah, but Elon Musk is also flying around, like going to the World Cup and going to these concerts and like, you know, having 18 kids with his yeah. like, you know, 22 yes! year old, like, a highly like, girlfriend. powerful, so, like, fucking like, thrill like, filled <laughs> man. But he is doing that stuff though. Like, he's having fun. He's Nick is sleeping stuff, in like, and eating McDonald's and complaining on the internet about, <laughs> like, a faggot. He needs to stop <laughs> being a bitch. He needs to go I mean, to war I, and wake up is, like it's war and stay awake late like it's war. Is Nick autistic like Elon Musk? If he's not, then he's no good to us, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Your point. <laughs> but yeah, he needs to find that spirit in him. And if he can't do that, then he's just like he's just a he's just a fucking hope salesman. And I'm not for that. I don't know. He's 25. He'll 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 either find his way or he won't find his way. But, you know, I think that um, like what he's done at 25 being and this is honestly one of the things that got me to like, like not hate him and kind of like think like like actually listen to what he had to say is like, what must it be like to be completely banned off everything? Like when you're when you're 18, 19, 20 years old, like what must that be like? What, what does that actually do to a person? How does that fuck with a person? And like, like all the stuff he has coming down on him all the time. I can't imagine what that's actually done to his psyche. I mean, that would be a really fat. I like, that's a conversation I'd actually like to have with him. Like, what is it like to actually be you? Like, what is yeah. it like to go through this when you're younger? Like, how did you like, like, what were you thinking? How did you react? And, and, and like, I wouldn't want any of like the bullshit. I agree that grow wipers are retarded and have not been on the offense since <laughs> grow wiper war. However, at 25, Nick has accomplished more than either of you ever have. Why would he take your advice? Well, I would say, first of all, like you guys don't actually know what I've accomplished and like, how are we measuring success? Because most of you guys like have no idea what I've actually done in the real world. But Nick doesn't have to take advice from anyone. But I think that how I see it is like, you know, again, he's 25 years old. He's done a lot. He has the potential to do a lot more. But if you think you know everything when you're 25, like, and I think that you would probably say the same thing, Big Tech. If you think you know everything when you're 25, just wait to get hit in the face by the time you're 40 with how much you didn't know when you were 25. It's real. Yeah, a lot of 24. <laughs> there's a lot of 25-year-olds that accomplish a lot. That doesn't mean they don't need to take anybody else's perspective into account. That's retarded yeah. thinking, actually. It's like, okay, so a child star. Uh, so Steve Urkel accomplished a lot by the time he was 25, whoever that kid's name was or whatever. Some, oh, yeah. mov some movie star or some wonderkin type of kid who was like a chess prodigy who became a grand chess master by the time they were 22 years old or something. Oh, so I don't have to listen to anybody who's grown up because I was really good at chess. Oh, I don't have to listen to anybody who's got experience in the world because I was a really good live streamer. I mean, like that's literally what he's accomplished. He was just a, he's a, he's a very sharp, he has a high charisma level, um, high autism. Like, uh, you know, he was in debate team and modeled UN. So he like carved out a, and then he entered into this sector of online political debate and he rose to the top. And then he got like this massive incel following because of his like unique nature. That's what does he accomplish? Okay. So the accomplishment was, you know, he's been shifting narratives and stuff. He's having massive effect, but that doesn't make him a well-rounded human. That doesn't make him a fully right. developed person. Like what has he accomplished? Other than that, I mean, like that's those are phenomenal things, but that doesn't make him um, wiser than anybody else. It truly doesn't. It, 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 like just uh, an initial success. Part of the success Nick got was because he was so young. It was like, wow, mm -hmm. this is amazing. Nobody expects this level of operation on this in in this way from a young kid. But if he came on the scene with his exact same power level at thirty five, it wouldn't mean as much. He would just be like. And also he'd probably have a wife and kids and a job and a need to, and he would have less time, but he was a, a college dropout who started streaming online super intensely, burned a bunch of people who had already organized a big thing, Richard Spencer, Alsup, all the rest. There was already a big old uh, accumulation of energy and he fucking stole it for himself by rising to the top as like the 
Jack Sparrow or he was the new Billy the Kid, the new gun in town. And everybody's like, all right, I'm with this guy. And he had like a new brand. He rebranded uh, what the alt-right was doing. So he just came and like basically stole the energy from a big movement that already existed. Uh, the Trump energy, he rode on the wave of Trump. He rode on the wave of the fucking Pepe memes, turned it into um, Groiper memes. Not Pepe, by the way, Groiper instead. And, like, he he surfed on a big wave that came in, and he caught that wave and he rode it. Like, hey, that's phenomenal. Good job. You win the surfing context contest. And you won the gold medal at the surfing contest of the big wave that came in in 2014. Now what? Mm-hmm. Like, that's it. It's like, okay, you were the surfing championship of the world by 24. What are you going to do now? Uh, well, we're just looking. All right, what's the next big wave? You got to do it again or else you're you're old. You're old news if you don't do it again. If you can't win the next one, if you can't fucking bring in another gold medal, then you're just like, uh, hit it and quit it. You know, one hit wonder. Yeah. So that, that's my answer to that. 